South Africa, the wide prevalence of guns and the violence that is often executed because of the presence of guns in the country. And it got us wondering, really, what effect the Oscar Pistorius case has had on the debate around gun control, because we normally, of course, associate the gun control debate with America, don't we? But there is a South African debate to be had. Is it being had? And what exactly is the status of gun control in uh, South Africa at the moment? I'm joined now by Adele Kirsten. She's from an organisation called Gun Free South Africa. Adele, thank you very much for speaking to us. I might get you first to reflect on the Pistorius case and what you think it's doing to gun culture and the gun debate in South Africa? In many ways, it's such a South African story. And it is about our love affair with guns, which goes back to, you know, our sort of uh, uh, history. And so we, like many countries, like Australia and like the US, where settlers have a very strong attachment to guns, both as sort of part of their cultural identity, but also as a, a means to subjugate the indigenous people. And, and that's certainly part of South Africa's story. And then, of course, our apartheid history, where the gun law, the Arms and Ammunition Act at that time, was a typical apartheid piece of legislation. It facilitated white access to weapons. Uh, and then, of course, post-94, new gun laws. And our new gun law, I guess, reflects some of that uh, political transformation phase. And we've raised the bar significantly for gun ownership in this country. So how, how do you so explain the, those two things together, the quite stringent gun laws on the one hand and the prevalence of guns at quite an extraordinary scale on the other? Well, we have, it, I guess it's the legacy both of apartheid plus of our political transformation, many countries that go through the kind of transition that South Africa has undergone often experience spikes in violent crime. Uh, of course, in the first sort of 10 years, part of it was armed caches and uh, the legacy of the liberation wars. But right now, our gun numbers have reduced. We've also seen in the last 10 years an almost 50% reduction in our gun deaths. So when Gun Free South Africa started in 1994, there were 35 people being killed every single day with the gun. We now are at 17 people a day. Now that's an enormous amount of people still being killed daily. So we, so the issue of gun violence remains an enormous challenge in this country, and the Pistorius case has highlighted that. We're just staying with Pistorius for a moment, Oscar Pistorius. Uh, he'd been denied a gun license in the past. He, he'd also been involved in a whole lot of, uh, or a few alleged violent incidents. And under South Africa's stricter gun laws, uh, I would have thought that that would have meant he would have failed the test in pretty spectacular fashion. So how is it that he's managed to get a license? Well, it, it demonstrates both the strength of the law and the weakness. So the strength is that on his initial application, he was refused the license. You are automatically excluded if you have a history of violent behavior. And even if someone reports a neighbor, an ex-spouse, if someone reports uh, abusive behavior, that automatically excludes you from even applying for a license. So there could be several reasons why he would refuse the license then initially. So for Gun Free South Africa, that's an indication that the law works. It's this what it was meant to do. And he took it on appeal. So then you bring in your lawyer. I'm not sure what happened in the appeal process and what uh, motivation he gave for why he should uh, have a, a weapon. And so what that tells us, we need to look at the appeal board. There have been problems there. Are there ways in which the legislation can be strengthened there? Gunfrey's own view on attack since the law came into play in 2000 is that the appeal board should be an independent body that sits outside of the police. But I think the other thing is, I think the celebrity culture plus the either apathy or fear of people reporting. There were several uh, incidents, but the most recent being him discharging a weapon in a public space in a restaurant. Someone should have reported him. Mm. Isn't that people just see that kind of behavior as the restaurant owner says was just an accident? That's not an accident, that was negligent use of a firearm. But whichever explanation that you offer for the fact that he was not reported, for example, for discharging the firearm in a restaurant, whichever explanation you, you offer does point to 
the prevalence of violence and gun culture in South Africa. And it's one of these odd things to observe that you have so much of South Africa's middle class, often white middle class, in these kind of gated communities behind electric, electrified fences, and then they still own a gun for self-defence. Well, I mean, I think the Pistorius case has highlighted that so clearly. I and mean, in fact, part of the media story has been emphasised on the high levels of crime in those kinds of contexts. And the reality is that the majority of crime victims of black South Africans living in townships would, would not have that kind of security. Um, and so the story has reinforced, I guess, the middle class, affluent, primarily white, uh, paranoia about crime levels, when in fact, uh, those are not the people who are the primary victims. However, the other thing that the story's case does demonstrate is that um, women are very much at risk in their own home to be shot by someone they know with a legal gun. Uh, and so in many ways, this, this, this incident really um, illustrates so many different features of our society at the moment. And that's been one of the reasons for the interest. But it certainly raised the debate here about the need for stricter gun control. Not the only country to be having those debates. The United States, of course, famously in the middle of a gun control debate at the moment and some legislation being uh, put forward. So these things are unfolding in several countries, Adele. Uh, it's a horrific circumstance, a tragic circumstances for us to be having the conversation, but an important one nonetheless. And I thank you very much for having it with us. Thank you. Adele Kirsten from Gun Free South Africa. You're on RN Drive with Willie Daly. Warbles on a lot to YouTube with yet another update from ABC Radio National regarding Oscar Pistorius and the situation in white South Africa regarding guns and gun violence and crime and fear of crime and paranoia and sense of entitlement. Ciao.